Thank you, uh, everyone, for joining us. This is Paul Saunders, uh, president of the National Interest, uh, conducting uh, this uh, conversation for In the National Interest. Uh, I'm talking today to Nobuo Tanaka, uh, who's chair of the Innovation for Cool Earth Forum uh, Steering Committee, uh, a Japanese career diplomat with a very distinguished background as executive director of uh, the International Energy Agency, uh, and later the, the president and then chairman of the Sasakawa Peace uh, Foundation, a, a very major uh, charitable foundation in Japan. Uh, Mr. Tanaka, mm -hmm. thank you so much uh, for, for joining us today. Yeah, you're most welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, thank you. So I, I thought I would start with a, a question about Russia in global energy. You know, we're almost exactly two years after uh, uh, Russia's, uh, uh, I guess I should say, most recent invasion of mm -hmm. Ukraine in, in view of yeah. the 2014 uh, seizure of Crimea and, and the intervention mm -hmm. in, in Eastern Ukraine. Uh, mm -hmm. But we're almost two years after that. Mm -hmm. uh, Russia, of course, is a, a very major player uh, in the mm -hmm. global energy system in, in multiple ways, oil, mm -hmm. gas, uh, nuclear, mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, coal, uh, for that mm -hmm. matter, uh, also. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And as you reflect on uh, these last two years, uh, how do you see Russia's uh, role in the global energy system uh, having mm -hmm. evolved and uh, what what do you see as you look ahead? Yeah, well, thank you for the very important and interesting question. Yes, uh, Russia is, uh, as you say, the energy superpower, the largest producer and exporter of oil, gas, uh, uh, and uh, coal also. And and it also produces lots of electricity through the nuclear power. Uh, it's an exporter of enriched uranium. Um, so certainly, uh, uh, Russia is really a major player in the energy sector. So actually, the war between Ukraine and Russia triggers this uh, crisis in Europe of the uh, shortage of supply of natural gas, which is uh, transported by the pipeline system. So pipeline is a very fixed system. So uh, Russian gas cannot go to the other sources, other places, uh, uh, you know, because liquefi liquefaction facility is not enough for Russia to export. So definitely Russia you know, suffered a lot by losing the biggest market of its natural gas to Europe. On the other hand, Europe suffered because of the uh, 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 shortage of gas means uh, replacing this gas by the liquefied natural gas. They don't have enough facility and also the market of LNG is suddenly tight. So the price of gas went very, very high and that triggers the other prices like oil, gas, coal and especially electricity price uh, skyrocketed. So that was uh, a really a catastrophic uh, energy crisis, not only oil crisis, which uh, the 50 years ago, the IA was created by the oil shock. Uh, I just I came back from the 50th anniversary of IEA mm. ministerial meeting held in Paris. So that, that, that crisis was only only oil. And uh, IEA was created to make the strategic stockpile of oil and supply in case of emergency. So you know, that is the uh, watchdog of the oil market. But now it's all area of energy are in crisis. So IEA released stockpile of oil, but that's not enough. How to do the manage the gas trade, how to do the uh, electricity uh, let's say, uh, market. So uh, suddenly uh, this creates a really, really first kind of the uh, uh, energy shock to, to, to everybody. Gradually, the situation is uh, uh, is uh, settling down because of the uh, uh, the uh, Europe is searching for the alternative sources of gas, and the US, United States is the largest exporter of the liquefied natural gas now, and uh, that helped a lot to the European market. And uh, certainly uh, oil uh, from uh, Russia is now heading toward India and China. So that gives uh, a very interesting balance uh, recovering in, in the oil market. So the things is getting 
settled. Uh, the price of oil, price of uh, electricity, gas has been a bit stabilizing. But the issue is not uh, stop there uh, because uh, climate change mitigation. So we have to uh, moving away from fossil fuel for the sake of uh, decarbonization. So this challenge is is coming at the same time of this energy crisis, and Europe is responding in a way by increasing more renewable energy, which are indigenous in Europe. So that will enhance energy security and sustainability at the same time. So Europe is really accelerating the transformation to the, the uh, renewable energy sources, and and and, and uh, you know that is the one another big shock of decarbonization to many countries. Europe is trying to use the tariff and carbon uh, adjust border adjustment measures that it forces other uh, exporting uh, countries to Europe should uh, accommodate uh, the similar rules of Europe in, on in terms of the dec decarbonization. So now the issue is with this energy crisis together with Christ, uh, climate crisis, how can we you know, overcome these difficulties and achieve energy security as well as sustainability? So Russia, unfortunately, definitely the loser in these uh, two games because uh, Russia is losing the investment from the Western world for technology. Technologies are not coming in. They are uh, uh, definitely uh, losing some of the revenues from oil or gas. And certainly, they are, you know, they, they are now uh, observing the brain drain from the country. So definitely, Russia is least prepared for this uh, climate change mitigation as well as energy security. So on the other hand, U.S. is definitely winner because of the energy independence. The United States has a, 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 in the hostile field. U.S. is net exporter of oil and net exporter of gas. And with huge incentives of uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, renewable energy development is moving very, very fast. Carbon sequestration, carbon capture and storage triggered by the uh, tax credit of the Inflation Reduction Act. There are lots of investment from other countries happening to this sector also. So U.S. is uh, definitely the big winner. Europe is trying to be a winner by transformation to more uh, uh, renewables. So how Japan can cope with this kind of situation? We are the importer uh, of, of everything and uh, trying our best of uh, increasing renewables and try to restart nuclear power. So this is, again, very tricky political issue after Fukushima. So Japan can be a, a winner as well as uh, Europe or uh, United States if we succeed in restarting nuclear power and also developing the supply chain of the clean hydrogen. Hydrogen is a clean fuel. So by, make, by generating it by the renewable with the electrolyzer, as well as uh, uh, CCS uh, uh, with uh, natural gas, you know, this green hydrogen or blue hydrogen, if hydrogen can be uh, built as a clean fuel, alternative fuel, then the uh, uh, fossil fuel, maybe Japan can uh, belong to the winner side. But who knows? This is a really challenge for all the countries um, in, in anywhere in the world. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So you, you touched on nuclear energy uh, mm -hmm. in a couple of points uh, in, in your uh, response there. Uh, of course, at the, the recent United Nations uh, Climate Summit late last year mm -hmm. in Dubai, uh, the United States and about two dozen other countries mm -hmm. uh, pledged to, uh, to try to increase their mm -hmm. uh, nuclear energy capacity. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. by uh, a, a factor of three between now and 2050. Correct. Uh, mm -hmm. That it's obviously something that is uh, politically controversial in, in some places, you know, certainly in Japan, uh, mm -hmm. also in, in Germany and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and a number of other uh, nations. 
Mm -hmm. uh, uh, conversely, of course, from the perspective of, of some others, it's a, a, you know, a, a secure uh, source of, mm -hmm. of low uh, carbon mm -hmm. or, or zero mm -hmm. carbon, depending on how you do your accounting uh, e energy. Uh, how, how do you see the role of, of nuclear moving forward? Do you think this tripling is realistic? Uh, uh, what, what, what do you think we may yeah. see? Thank you, Paul. This is a very important question. Um, tripling uh, is promoted uh, at the COP28 uh, at uh, Abu, Abu Dhabi. Uh, 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 and uh, I think uh, it is very ambitious target, in fact. Um, Japan is one of them, one of the 20 some countries who agreed to this tripling um, by 2050. IEA's uh, net zero scenario uh, foresee, forecast that only double of the nuclear power by 2050. So it, this uh, proposal of tripling is uh, much more ambitious than the IEA's ambitious net zero scenario. So how can we achieve this? This is a really uh, interesting, the NEA, Nuclear Energy Agency of the OECD, forecast uh, this uh, tripling by three things. One is that extension of the life of uh, existing nuclear power from 40 to 60 or 60 to even 80. And then all of the uh, reactors under construction should be uh, completed uh, within its schedule. This is another assumption. And the third one is development and deployment of the small modular reactors, um, uh, which are now uh, uh, developed in many countries, especially US, the Terra Power, uh, or other new scale. There are many uh, the ventures are developing the, the, the small modular reactors. So if small modular reactors are coming as expected, maybe you know this tripling is not impossible. But uh, to make it happen, certainly uh, we need uh, the very strong support of the public or socio-public, uh, geopolit not geopolitical, but socio-political uh, support is necessary. I discussed at ISEF Innovation Cool Earth Forum about what is the sustainability condition for the nuclear power. And uh, we agree that uh, one is the safety or minimizing the risk of accident. So but small modular reactor is one of the answer to this question. And the second condition for the sustainability is how can we settle the issue of high level radioactive waste. Um, Japan, I mean, US is trying to make a disposal site, Yucca Mountain, but it's not working so well. So it's up in the air. The Finland has a place on Karol to, as a disposal site. France is developing somewhere. Japan cannot identify the disposal site yet. Uh, so we ha have the problem of where to dispose. So, but the technology which the, uh, the Idaho National Laboratory in the US uh, uh, developed uh, the technology called pyrochemical processing and mm -hmm. uh, uh, a fast reactor, which is called integral fast reactor, which reduce the toxicity of the waste from the 100,000 year thing to the just 300 years. 300 years is still long, but it, 300 years is probably much easy to dispose or store somewhere for, and that, you know, a corporation can be responsible uh, to take care of or to manage this uh, radioactive waste for 300 years. So maybe it can give much more, uh, can get much more public support for the disposal uh, if this technology is deployed. And the third condition for the sustainability of the nuclear is risk of proliferation, I mean, weaponization. So uh, we, Ukraine situation cl clearly tells us that if Ukraine uh, kept some of the nuclear arsenals, which they returned to Russia, Russia may not have attacked Ukraine. So this gives the very strong current uh, threat of Russia gives uh, lots of incentives for non-weapon states to have one. North Korea is already have weapon. 
Iran wants to have a weapon. If Iran has a weapon, then Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Egypt. So this uh, domino effect of proliferation is really, really dangerous. Uh, so nuclear power, peaceful use is the key, but some technologies are prone to this weaponization. So how can we avoid this kind of technology is another very important condition of the sustainability. I think U.S. Idaho National National Laboratories Integral Fast Reactor is, is one of the model of such kind of technology. So I'm promoting the idea of you uh, working together, U.S., Japan, and Korea, uh, South Korea, which is uh, very much interested in this technology, can develop a peaceful. Uh, and sustainable model of the nuclear together. So to make uh, the different kind, but more sustainable nuclear uh, can be uh, deployed, not only US, Japan, Korea, but some other places if necessary. So that kind of sustainable condition and sustainable uh, nuclear reactor deployment is probably necessary to make nuclear as an option for the future. And I think, uh, you know, it is not impossible, but it is very much tricky because of the, let's say, public opinion and current uh, geopolitical situation in the world uh, and, the, and the nuclear arsenals and threat. So this makes the nuclear probably important, but very much, very much difficult option in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe staying on the, the topic of, of climate uh, for a mm -hmm. minute, uh, we're a little bit more than, than uh, 30 years after the, the signing of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which is mm -hmm. the uh, kind of cr created the, the, the frameworks that we use today uh, globally mm -hmm. in negotiating uh, on that mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for, for much of that period, uh, there was a major focus on trying to reach uh, global agreements on limiting emissions. Uh, cer mm -hmm. Certainly the, the Kyoto Protocol uh, being right. uh, the, the first example of, of mm -hmm. that, uh, the, the Paris Agreement uh, taking, mm -hmm. of course, a voluntary approach rather than mm -hmm. a, a binding uh, approach, right. but, but right. trying to move in the same direction. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in the last several years, however, we've really seen uh, uh, an escalation of, of geopolitical tension. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and in the context of climate, I would say, especially between uh, the United States and, and China, which of course are the, the two largest uh, economies, uh, the two largest emitters, although you know China mm -hmm. at this point emitting probably twice as much as the United States uh, mm -hmm. every year. Um, uh, looking ahead at the future and thinking about you know, practical ways to reduce mm -hmm. uh, emissions, uh, and uh, practical, of course, includes, you know, commercially viable without indefinite, mm -hmm. you know, go government subsidies, which I don't think uh, taxpayers anywhere uh, 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 would uh, would probably support. How, how do you think uh, the, the, the United States, Japan, uh, uh, other uh, countries uh, in our mm -hmm. uh, uh, sort of alliance system or our, mm -hmm. our large network of partners. Uh, mm -hmm. How should we approach this problem? Yeah, uh, thank you, Paul. It's a most difficult question. And uh, nobody <laughs> knows the answer. Can we be optimistic? Can, should we be pessimistic? This is really tricky. But uh, um, when we see the COP uh, in Dubai, um, uh, uh, 28, yeah, certainly uh, that country, I mean, United Arab Emirates, the oil producer, gas producer. So, but they take advantage of the leadership role and uh, come to the uh, agreement of transitioning away from fossil fuel. Uh, how, how we are, do that, that is definitely the different question, but uh, you know, re uh, uh, increasing uh, the renewable energy by double to, to uh, 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 triple the, the renewable energy by 2030 as agreed. 
And uh, doubling the energy efficiency by 2030 is agreed, then reducing substantially the methane emission agreed. So certainly uh, uh, countries are ready to agree to the uh, intermediate target as well as targets to 2050. So China, India, these are major players and major emitters uh, should play the role um, and uh, 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 how can the, 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 the northern country or developed countries uh, help them to achieve the, their target? Certainly, I mean, we need the international collaboration. And I think uh, John Kerry in, 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 the, in Dubai, uh, the, he made a very good uh, 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 collaboration with China. Yeah, Xi, Jinping, Xi Jinping is the Chinese uh, let's say, uh, negotiator for this climate change, and they are very good friends. And they show the good uh, collaborative leadership uh, to, to the other countries. So this, this is a very, very uh, important that the US and uh, China, uh, at least in this area, are working together. So that is, uh, that, that, that is uh, the one, one element. Another element which I think is very important is India. And India is now trying to join the International Energy Agency, IEA. Um, this 50th anniversary commemorates the start of new uh, 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 agreement, uh, negotiation for or providing the full membership of IEA to India. And India is uh, definitely the big emitter. So they, I mean, uh, uh, they are much more serious about energy security as well as decarbonization and uh, join this uh, group. Uh, so this is a very good, uh, let's say, indication. And the third rate, um, industries are moving toward decarbonization in a very substantial way because uh, the high tech or mega tech firms like Apple, GAFA or Microsoft, they, are, they have a target much more ambitious than the country. So by 2030, these companies are committing to the renewable energy 100% or scope one, two, three reduction. So, and whole supply chain of these corporations. So the companies which supply their devices or parts to these uh, me mega tech farms, um, they have to do the same thing by 2030. So this is, uh, this, uh, is a very strong drive uh, for decarbonization, but it's not driven from the supply side. It's, it's, uh, this transformation is driven by the demand side, uh, like mega tech firms. And then the, 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 the auto sector is the same thing. Uh, European auto leads this decarbonization. GM is following. I think Toyota should follow the same thing. So sooner or later, the, 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 the only uh, zero carbon autos are coming to uh, the to, to road. So I think, uh, and steel companies sh should produce green or clean steel for these autos. Otherwise, the steel cannot be used for these sectors. So I think uh, this demand side driven transformation is the strongest uh, power to drive decarbonization. And I think, there is no exception. Even the companies in India, China, or ASEAN countries, or, 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 or Africa, if they want to be in the supply chain of these megatech farms or auto sectors, they have to do the same. So this will lead to the decarbonization, even though costly and difficult, um, um, uh, are really, I mean, driven uh, toward that direction and, and together with collaboration with North and South by sharing the, the credit, uh, the carbon credit uh, mechanisms. So I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I cannot be, um, anybody can be pessimistic, but I'm optimistic in a way that uh, uh, innovation must take place for technologies. Innovation must happen to the government policies and innovation must happen to the corporate behavior or consumer behaviors. And that's the only way that we can save the planet. Well, th thank you so much. That That's a very good uh, place to stop for today. I think, uh, I, I imagine many of us would agree uh, that, that innovation uh, is, is really critical. And I, I think if we look back at the history of, 
of human civilization. There, there's been just this constant uh, drive to, to develop new things and uh, uh, particularly to have uh, more energy uh, mm -hmm. at our disposal uh, to, to, to uh, uh, help ourselves to become uh, more prosperous. So uh, right. I, I think- Yeah, let's, let's try to be as optimistic as possible. Uh, by the way, one small word of addition is the fusion. Nuclear fusion is now coming very seriously from the United States. John Kerry raised the issue of fusion. Microsoft is committing to buy some of the fusion, I mean, generated electricity. So maybe fusion come much earlier than what we are thinking now. So if that's the case, I can be uh, more optimistic for the future of the I, energy sector. Right. We, we, we can all hope. We can all hope.